Hi and welcome students. In this computer fundamentals video I'm going to be going over the keyboard and mouse. I'll go over some tips and tricks for beginners as well as some shortcuts for more advanced users. Let's get started. Alright so over here at the top row of our keyboard we see some different keys starting with escape. I don't use escape too often but these function keys I do use regularly. F5 can be used on any web page to automatically refresh the page. F7 can be used within Microsoft Office to check spelling and grammar. Over here along the right side you'll see a print screen button. This is how you would take a screenshot. You could actually press the Windows key which is down here in the bottom left plus the print screen key to take a screenshot within Windows 10. Alright, next up we'll start with uh, this area here which is our main keyboard area. When you're computing you want to keep your left hand, especially when you're typing, on A, S, D, and F and you want to keep your right hand while typing on J, K, L, and the semicolon button. Okay, this is what's called the home row. That's where you keep your fingers when you type. Along the top area of this uh, rectangle here, you're going to see the number keys. I don't ever use these number keys. Uh, if you're going to type something and you have the number keys available over here on the right side, you're going to want to use those number keys as opposed to uh, these ones over here because it'll be faster. So I hardly ever use these number keys, but if you hold down shift, while you uh, press any of these number keys, it'll actually choose the icon above it. So above the one we see like an exclamation point. If you hold down shift and press one, and notice there's shift on both sides of the keyboard, so you could use your left or your right hand. You could get any of these number keys, uh, uh, special characters up at the top of the number keys, okay? All right, so the backspace button. The backspace button is to delete a character to the left. Okay, that's very important because the character to the left of wherever you're at on your present or on your Word document or any document, if you want to delete the character to the left, you use backspace. Okay, and I'll go over deleting the character to the right in just a minute. Tab can be used for a variety of shortcuts. For instance, Alt and Tab will switch you windows between your Windows operating system. It's also used in Microsoft Office for moving you uh, across your page just a little bit, so it's mostly used for indentation. You then see all of your character keys up here, okay, along the rest of this row, as well as backslash, and then you see caps lock. Anytime you press caps lock, it's going to automatically capitalize all the words in your uh, text. So just make sure that if you use caps lock, uh, most of the time it'll turn on this caps lock uh, light indicator right over here, and so that will um, turn that on. So you got to make sure that if you do use caps lock and you turn it on, that you turn it back off when you're done. As I said, the next row is your home row, followed by the enter key. Most of the time you can press the enter key to finalize a selection, so don't forget to use the enter key rather than clicking things like OK. Again, one of the goals when we're computing is to keep our hands on the keyboard rather than the mouse, because as you keep your hands on the keyboard and you learn those shortcuts, it's actually going to save you a lot of time because you won't be constantly moving your hand back and forth between your mouse and your keyboard. Uh, next up you have the shift key. The shift key can be used to capitalize letters and it's also um, used in a variety of different shortcuts. Okay, Alright, so down here uh, along the bottom row, row you'll see control. Control key is the main shortcut key in um, a Windows computer and it's used for a variety of different things. For instance, control E in Word is to center. Control R is to write a line, Control U is to underline, Control I is to uh, italicize, Control P is to print, Control A is to select all, Control S is to save, Control let's see, F is to find, uh, Control Z is to undo, Control X is to cut, Control C is to copy, Control V is to paste, Control B is to bold, Control N is to create a new document. Okay, and so as you can see, uh, the control key handles a lot of different shortcuts within Windows. Uh, I was naming mostly Microsoft Office shortcuts there, but um, you know you could use them throughout the uh, Windows 10 operating system. Next up, you'll see the Windows key. Windows key is super useful for opening up your Start menu and searching for things. So if you ever want to search for a file in Windows 10, you just hit the Windows key and start typing the name of the file, and that will. Um, allow you to search for uh, different 
programs, okay, programs or files or folders. The Alt key, again, Alt and Tab used together, switch your windows. Space bar, we know what that does, that creates a space in your documents. You'll see another Alt key on the right side, another Windows key on the right side, and another Control key on the right side. I mostly use the left side for these keys though. Over here, these are six keys above our arrow keys, <clears throat> and these six keys do a variety of different things. For instance, home will usually take you to the beginning of a line. Control plus home will take you to the beginning of a document. Page up will scroll your page up, okay, automatically, so you don't need to use the scroll wheel on your keyboard, or sorry, on your mouse. Over here, uh, delete will usually delete things to the right. So as backspace deletes things to the left, delete will delete items to the right in most cases. Okay. Uh, end, if you hold, if you press end, it'll take you to the end of a line. If you hold control and press end, it'll take you to the end of a document. Over here is page down. That's how you scroll down, and you'll see the arrow keys that will move you around while you're using the Windows operating system. On the right side over here, you'll see number lock. Uh, number lock, sometimes people turn this on and then uh, if you turn on number lock, uh, it'll allow you to use the numbers. If it's off, it, um, it won't allow you to use these numbers over here. Not sure why it's even an option, but there it is. Uh, then you see divide. <coughs> That's also your slash right there. You have divide, multiply, which is the asterisk, minus, which is a dash, and plus, which is your addition right there, and then you see enter to finalize. So basically you need everything over here for calculations and computing. So whenever my students are entering in numbers in something like Excel, I always recommend that they use this area over here, which is your number pad as opposed to these numbers over here, which take a lot longer to type out. Finally you have zero, uh, and then you also have the um, dot, so that's going to be your decimal, okay? And then finally you have enter, which finalizes your selection. So that is your uh, keyboard right there. So I know I went over a lot right there. So if you f uh, feel free to rewatch the video or go back to where I was talking about the certain section of the keyboard to uh, go over that. Finally, uh, the mouse. <coughs> the mouse uh, it has a lot less functionality than the keyboard. That's why I recommend using keyboard shortcuts as opposed to using your mouse. Uh, there's a couple things that are common with the mouse, and that's this area here. This is clicking. Clicking is always on the left side, so if uh, I ever refer to in any of my tutorials to click on something, that's just one single click and release, okay? Another option is to click and drag, and so that's when you click on something and you hold the left side down, okay? And so that's going to be your click and drag. Finally, on the left side here, you also have the option for double clicking. That's two repeated clicks really fast, the one, two. That usually selects items, okay? And so uh, that will be double clicking. Make sure when you are double clicking to keep your mouse perfectly still, don't move it at all, otherwise it'll register as two single clicks. Next up, you have this scroll wheel here. Most common uses for the scroll wheel are to scroll up and to scroll down. <coughs> These two things allow you to scroll web pages or any uh, application up and down. Uh, and so those are your two uses for the scroll wheel. There is a third use where you could actually click down on your scroll wheel. If you push down and you have that functionality on your mouse, it will actually uh, do things like open up web links. So if you have a link on a website that you want to open up in a new tab, you push down on the scroll wheel and it will open up in a new tab. So that's a very cool use for that scroll wheel as well that most people don't know about. Finally, uh, the right side menu, uh, or the right click, uh, it's always referred to as right click, okay, whereas clicking is automatically assumed it's left, so I'll never say left click in a tutorial. Right click I will say. So right click is way less common. Some new computer users, uh, beginners who are starting out on computers, insist on right clicking on things. Uh, typically you'll do that with your middle finger on your right hand, and uh, that one is way less common. It's really only used to open up submenus. Um, clicking is your default, so uh, typically we don't right click too often. So I know I went over a lot in this video and it's some good things to keep in mind if you're a beginner at computers, but hopefully this video is help, uh, helpful for you and it will help you use your keyboard and mouse a little bit more efficiently. So if I didn't cover specific keys, that's because I don't use those keys very often, so uh, not much point on covering something that is not super useful on the keyboard. So um, if there is any any questions that you have, please put it in the comment section below and 
I'll do my best to respond to you. If you found the video useful, please put a thumbs up on the video and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you have any questions, again, put them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.